What's up, it's Austin, we up, we here with The Bird House. What's up, how you feeling today? What's good, man? Thanks for having me, thanks for coming by. Glad to be uh, on the channel. Legendary producer. So where are you originally from? Uh, I was born in Houston, Texas. Uh, I moved to uh, to Los Angeles area when I was like five years old. So I grew up and went to high school in like the LA suburbs, Pacific Palisades. Went to uh, Palisades High School and then moved to Austin when I was like 19 years old, like right after I graduated. Yeah, so give me a, a little bit about your uh, personal life, like you growing up and stuff. Uh, I, I mean, like I always played sports, um, you know, got in a lot of trouble. And that was pretty much the reason I moved to Austin after high school was just, you know, wanting to get out of town and find somewhere to go be productive. And I was familiar with Austin. Like my parents were from here. My grandparents lived out here. My brother was at UT at the time. So, uh, it just seemed like a good spot to land. And then didn't even really know it had like a whole music culture like it did. And uh, just kind of fell in with that once I got out here. How did you get into producing? It was one of my first spots I would go buy weed. And his roommate had a studio, like, you know, set up in the bedroom. And I would just kind of peek in there and be like, what are you doing? And uh, so like I was a rapper for years, you know, originally, you know, was, was an artist, was a rapper, didn't make beats or record or anything like that. <clears throat> and as I got older, I had kids. I couldn't really fuck around in the studio all day, you know, like when I was younger. And uh, and so I kind of had this moment of like realizing if I wanted to keep making music, I needed to learn how to how to do all of the production and recording and and mixing and mastering. So I guess initially my goal was like to make my own music. And then real quick, it just kind of became more fun to be behind the scenes and uh and that kind of led to like the birth of my studio so. how long have you been having a studio uh the, i've been at this location like two years in seven eight seven two four i was like a year out of my house in hutto uh, i quit like my day job like three years ago and just been doing this full time since then so um well a little over three years for the birdhouse Okay. So uh, who's some of your favorite artists that came through here? Um, I mean, Dobo for sure. You know, that's like the first kid who really tapped in with me and, and built with me from the ground up. Um, and so, you know, we've had great success. You know, he's the, the dopest in the city, regardless of what the list say or whatever. And uh, He was number one on the list. <laughs> yeah, no, no, y'all had it right. <laughs> y'all had it right. Um, uh, uh, OTM Thrax is on fire right now, working with him. He's going to be heavily featured on my album. Um, he just brought through Hot Boy Wes. He was, he was you know, hella cool and easy to work with. And laid down a fire-ass verse. Um, so a lot of dope people have been through here. Um, you know, most of the, like, young people you're going to see on my album, you know, at some point this year are you know, kind of, I guess, the ones I'm, like, most passionate about, and, you know, that's why I made sure I got them on my album, but, uh, like, Blaze the Artist, Bolympic, Blacklands, there, OSO Flacco, like, it's a lot of really, really dope-ass people on the record. So, just off, like, the top of your head, what is, like, your top five songs oh, you produce? Top five songs I produce? Yeah. Uh, Ben 10 is my favorite. Had to hop out the box with a big Ben. She want dick, so I told her to do tricks then. Ain't a park, not a third of your big Ben. Yeah. Changing like Ben 10, that was a good win. Like, that's the one where me and Dubbo really, like, hit another level. Where all of a sudden, like, we were getting, like, attention and traction at, like, a different level. And, and then, you know, that's the one the, that our label saw and wanted to sign us. And, you know, so. <clears throat> and, like, that's the one, like, where when I saw the video for that song, I was like, I was like, man, if I was a kid and I saw this shit, I would be hooked. You know what I mean? Like, like, like when I was a kid, I saw like nothing but a G thing, and they're all like playing volleyball and running around at the barbecue, and I was just like, man, I want to be there. 
Like that shit looks so lit. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like whatever this is, I want in. And fucking, I just felt like that video is that same type of like window for people to look and just be like, damn, what they got going on over there. Like, mm -hmm. um, so th that's always been my baby. Uh, that's one. Mm -hmm. The 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 new one we just dropped. Don't tempt me. Oh, she want a thirty, bitch. Don't make me mad. Better stay on my good side, bitch. Either I'm in the north or I'm in the four or I'm on the east side, bitch. At the end of this street, we got nothing but seven, so we get the clapping and shit. Like, I feel like that was where we like. Song of the year. Yeah. Oh damn. He said Song, it. I said it. I... But but on the cool, that was. And it was where, voted. Like... And it was voted last year. It was voted. Song of the year. It was voted. Damn. I didn't even know we were winning awards. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that one just has like a sound to it. You know, everybody, like as soon as they heard it, you know, as soon as I made the beat, Dubbo was like, what's up? He got <laughs> right in the booth. You know, when Donnie heard it, like when the label heard it, everybody was just hella excited about that one. And Wait, that where one. did you come up with that chord? When it, dun, 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 when it started off, it's like... I just, man. I've always felt like Dubbo would, would, would like sound great on like some some quasi rock type shit. Like, you know, that those like kind of aggressive beats work with him and, and his whole brand. And so, I don't know, that's just where my head was at when I was making the beat. But, um, you know, that was one where like, he was in the room when I was making it. And, like, as soon as I like pressed on the guitar, you know, he was like, damn, what's that? Do that, yeah, use that sound, I like that. You know, yeah. like, so it was like right from the moment, you know, we kind of knew we had something with that one. So it's like Dubbo, the only artist that you like, uh, like make a beat like that with, like, like um, specifically for. I mean, no, I've worked with some other artists in that way, but he's the one who most like stayed dedicated to that, and like that's a lot of artists' problem. And it's not that they need to work with me per se, but like, a lot of people are 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 not willing to invest in themselves in that way. Like either they won't get enough studio time where the producer can get paid while they're making the beat or be willing to pay for the beat or whatever. So they don't get that experience of like getting to sit there and build a song, you know, from the ground up. And like, you know, early on, you know, a few years ago, Dubbo and I kind of tapped in in that way where it was always our workflow. And, um, you know, he wasn't scared to invest in himself and, and you know, put some money towards it to make sure it was to everyone's benefit. And and then at the same time, like, I pushed his music like it was mine because it was, you know, like it was it was both of our music. Like every song he's dropped, damn near, I made the beat for. And so, you know, I was pushing it like, we were pushing it like a band, you know, as much as it was a solo artist. And, uh, and that helped him. And I, I just think rappers and producers should understand like, tapping in in that way and building in that way is like kind of how it's always been done you know since like what way way back in the day how bands would be made and everything right. tons of rap duos over the years you know that are good examples right. and so just to like lock in with somebody and build in that way is is a good investment right. <laughs> and Dubbo did it you know who is that number two oh, oh, shit. number three I'm so bad with the song. I mean, beat up the belly too. I hit the block with a four five. My bitch suck a dick and she too loud. And I beat up the back when the moon ride. And I hop out the bed when the moon dies. My first million. My boy Dubbo taking the whole list. <laughs> oh yeah, damn. I mean, you know, like like I got a I got a joint with Quinn. I really like. Like I fuck with that song. Um, the 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 new I'd probably say number four would be that new trench baby song. How cold on the streets, you can judge by your jury. We gon' get this low and nigga, we ain't got ass shit. So if I die today, who gon' take care of my children? I've been feeling pain and I don't think these doctors can cure. With Hot Boy Wes, I did the beat for that one. We recorded that here. Um and or we recorded Hot Boy Wes's part here. Thrax recorded his part with Gus at Fifth Street, but that song is 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 fucking dope. Like I, I, that was one where I was trying to use that beat on my album, and then Thrax had that play, and so it just made sense to slide it over to him. But but yeah, that song. You see, a lot of people wouldn't do that. Twenty k in a week. Well, I mean, Thrax is dope as fuck. He's he's someone. I've even said that before. Like, he's like the first person who I saw match what Dubbo did, where he was really grinding. 
you know, it wasn't just like one month on, one month off. It's like he's full time, you know, hustling to become a rapper and like to, you know, to break in and make it and shit. And then he invests in himself. So it's like you see him shooting videos, you see him dropping videos, you see him paying for features like, you know, making those kind of investments are how you can break away from the pack of a million people that are, you know, trying to be rapping. And five would be that, you know, what is it called? The Birdhouse featuring Quinn and the tag this whole came with a lace. Now I got a nigga shot like a taste. Damn. All the OGs and bad bitches praise. Came are. from the mud, now I ball like a pace. I'm Lies on my ass, we too fast, better chase. I'm on lead in the pencil, pull up and erase. I'm on my grind like a skater. We stepped in his yard like we thought a new thing. Um, it's at like 650,000 on YouTube. The video did good. It's only on YouTube. Yeah, I fuck with that song. So what's your top five in Austin looking like? That's what I thought you were asking me the first yeah. time. I, I, like, I, I wasn't going to ask you that, that, but then your reaction, I was like, I got to ask him. <laughs> no, nah, this would probably be easier. I mean, Dubbo's number one. Uh, Quinn is number two. Uh, they both have, you know, broken out of the city. You know, Dubbo did a nationwide tour with a fucking gigantic artist. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Conway the Machine, like every night it was a thousand people in the crowd. He killed every show. Um, and you know, Quinn had this talking my shit moment, and you know, it's been you know, worldwide ever since. Um, right now, I would say OTM Thrax is number three. Like I said, he's 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 the, he's like got the grind down you know what i'm saying and he he's not scared to keep putting money into himself and that's what it takes like you're competing against people who are super dope and who have like a million dollars a machine behind them you know um and all the help they need and so it's like you gotta you gotta really go out and get it and he does uh number four is mama duke she should have been on the top 20 list She's yeah, fine. Everybody, everybody told us that. Yeah, yeah. nah, she's, she's so dumb. I mean, really low-key, she would fucking, like, blow a lot of the rappers in the top 20 off of the stage. And, like, and like outsell them at the door. Like, she has a, lit a literal fan base that spends money with her when she does something. You know what I'm saying? Like, she can push the button on her Instagram and, you know, get her people to the door. And then they'll, like, know the words to her songs and shit, like. And she's also dope as fuck in the studio, like working with her in the studio. She's like one of one, like just really, truly like write songs out loud with like the people in the room. It's like she forces you to collaborate in this way where there's like no ego and it's all about just like creative ideas. And it's super fun to be a part of. And I love working with her. Uh, that's four. I would really have to say Jay Soldier. I was going to just say him. Yeah, facts. Because the same thing. It's like somebody with, with dope music, Jay Soldier, with motion, and who knows how to like play the game, like an excellent networker, you know, and like, That's like a builder, you know what I'm saying? A creator. Like, uh, yeah, I shouldn't even have to think that long on it. Jay Soldier, facts. Uh, yeah, I like that top five. That's what it should be for the Austin Hip Hop Awards. And I don't know why. It winds up not that. How do you feel about the Austin scene, like, right now? Like, the Austin... Like, not even just the rap scene, like... Because it's not even just rap blowing up right now. You got alternative, the producers, videographers going crazy. It's just, like, the whole scene is getting big as a whole. How you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I just think you see, like, investment of time, of resources, people putting their money into it. You know, there's more studios than there used to be. There's more producers you know, than there used to be. There's more content creators. Um, you know, we've had two rappers, you know, like be able to build platforms, you know, Quinn and, and Dubbo. And, uh, and then like a lot of people who, who see that, who are creating motion in the right way, where it's not like this underground vibe. It's like, a, you know, let's break out and let's kick the door open to the industry. Because it's like really crazy that Austin's never had that moment when you think about it, being as close to Houston, you know, Dallas has, and then like tons of other small towns across the United States 
that don't really have the like musical industry pull that Austin does have had big moments, you know, like of hip hop culture and Austin has stayed dormant. And so it's like, we're like a powder keg, like a sleeping giant, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so what do you think it's gonna take like for Austin to break out of that underground, like? Uh, I mean, you know, like, like a lot of things, it's like one song away. Um, but I just think like people building established careers, like there has to be a foundation for like the next generation to, to jump off from. And, uh, and then like ownership here, you know, having things like double O records where we actually have, you know, imprints where we can sign artists and build something like death row was in LA or, or like, you know, rap a lot or OTF or whatever, you know, like actually like build something from within the city that can take the city worldwide. So, so expand a little bit on like double O records, like who y'all got and like what y'all, what y'all got coming up? Uh, well, we have the Came A Long Way single, which is featuring OTM Thrax and Blackland. And so at this point, I would say like when Dubbo signed, he was given his own label and we have a lot of double O affiliates. Um, we have some people we seriously considered signing. Um, but right now my album and Dubbo's album are the total focus. So after those drop, you know, you'll, you'll see some, some more official, uh, Movement on the double O side. Wait a minute. Birdhouse um, and Dubbo got an album coming out? Dubbo has his own album. Yeah, yeah. I'm that saying. would be released by Baby Grand. I also have my own album. And after we finish, I can let you hear a few tracks. But yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. It's That's what's up? Um, about that. How you feel about how did you feel about the uh top twenty list as a whole though? I loved it. I mean, being number one, like first of all, like I said on my story, like it wasn't long ago, we were miles away from being on anybody's list. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dubbo kind of crept up on everybody. You know, he's like the people's champ. You know what I'm saying? He was like underestimated. And then all of a sudden, people were like, God damn, he's top the hottest in the city. And uh, so being just put number one was like a moment of kind of like, damn, look at how far we've come. Um, you know, even though it's like, it's not like a, a Grammy or we didn't win a million dollars, but like still just knowing like a short time ago, we wouldn't have been on that list. And now we're, you know, running the list. Um, and then I like it because it, it showed me like how we can get people to turn out and vote. Like that helps build a loyal fan base when you want to sell merch or sell tickets or, you know, get people to show up for a music video and shit like that. Um, I like competition. So like the fact that some people took it some type of way and, and then like jumped in the studio to, you know, make sure they're on the next list. You know, that, that helps everything grow. That's really all it's about is just shining light on the whole scene. And like no list is ever going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, like the right movie doesn't always win best picture. You know, I like seeing how y'all recognize where, you know, where Thrax is at. So that's uh, growth. That's really yeah. growth. Yeah, Mama Duke should have been on it. Um, you know, like my, my list would look a little different, but like, just like my top five just did, but, but yeah, I like, I like you and Trey Hundo because y'all like are helping build the culture, you know what I'm saying? And we need things like that here in Austin. That's like part of what I was just talking about, like having infrastructure to build from within, you know, is something that, you know, like LA has or Atlanta has and Austin needs. Yeah, I appreciate that. But anything else you want to say before we close this interview? Nah, man. I'll have a release date for my album at some point in the near future. It's fucking fire. We're going to finish uh, Domo's here in the near future. Um, you know, big things in the in the future for Double O Records and the Birdhouse. Um, there's a whole bunch of people that I work with, a bunch of young artists that like people haven't really gotten to hear from and I hope I can like help make that happen in the same way we did with Dubbo because there's just so much crazy ass talent in Austin and it's like time to be up as a city. Yeah man, I like how you said that. Oh yeah. All right man, we out.